Back in JS Quick Hits 66, we talked about using cookies to store bits of data in a user's browser. We didn't talk about how you can use cookies to communicate with the server, but we'll probably get to that someday. Today we're going to look at a different and arguably better approach. All modern browsers support something called local storage, which basically allows you to store key-value pairs for future reference. Note that these keys and values are always strings, so if you want to store arrays, objects, or numbers, you'll need to do some conversion. We'll get to that. Local storage differs from cookies in a few key ways. For one thing, local storage doesn't expire. It's there until you remove it or the user clears their storage data. For another thing, cookies are limited to 4 kilobytes of data, while local storage can be as large as 5 megabytes per domain. That's orders of magnitude more data, and while in most cases I don't advocate storing anywhere near that much, the ability to go over 4K certainly has its uses. For example, the markdown editor I use to write these tutorials, Dillinger, is an online app that keeps all of your documents in local storage, meaning that as long as you're accessing them from the same browser, they don't disappear between sessions. We're not going to build a markdown editor in this tutorial, but we are going to show how to do basic CRUD, create, read, update, delete, actions, using simple JavaScript. JavaScript handles local storage using the local storage method attached to JavaScript's native window object. This means technically when you call it, you're calling window.localStorage, but JavaScript lets you use window properties without explicitly typing out the object each time. Hooray! Okay, let's establish some data. With those established, let's set some local storage values with this code. You'll note that we're not converting those variables to strings here. That's because the local storage method is smart enough to do it for us. We will, however, have to convert once we get the data back. Let's do that. Here's the code. And let's go ahead and log those without conversion. All right, save that and take a look. As you can see, they're all strings, including the array. That's not particularly handy if we want to work with the array or the number, but fortunately we can use some built-in methods to parse them, like this. Save that and let's take another look. Much better. All right, so that's setting an item and retrieving it. Want to update one? All you have to do is overwrite it like this. Save that. This should give us labyrinth instead of aliens. And it does. If you need to remove an item from local storage, just use the remove item method. Observe. Save that. This is going to give us null. And it does because it no longer exists. And finally, if you want to clear out the entire set of items stored for the particular domain the script is running on, there's a command for that too. All right, all three of these should be null. Save, refresh, null, null, null. As you can see, local storage is really straightforward and easy to work with in modern browsers. In general, I prefer it to cookies for storing client-side data. Your mileage may vary, but it's definitely a tool worth adding to your toolkit, or belt, or closet piled half full of miscellaneous junk, or wherever you keep your tools. See you next time.